we shall now move on to folios the front desk cashier transfers or writes the financial transactions that have been done that have been recorded in the voucher to individual accounts or group account folios a folio is a written record of guests accounts and is created at the time of reservation or registration okay in the next video we'll talk about the different kinds of folios we will now start and discuss about the types of folios in the next section i'll definitely discuss in details about the uh, the types of folios let us just understand how it is divided so the type of folios is divided we'll talk about hotel front office accounts and that's divided into guest folios master folios non guest account folios and employee folios in your next chapter we are going to discuss in details about the types of folios in details but as of now kindly make a note of this diagram in your front office journal now a non guest or a city folio are also called semi permanent folio and these are the accounts of non guest business or agencies with hotel charges per purchasing privileges maybe they can buy now and pay later so we have a non guest or a city folio master folios are the accounts of more than one person or one guest room and are usually maintained for groups so when we have a lot of uh, you know person in a group so just to you know clear out any uh, miscommunication everything is put in a master folio so that can be easier for us to you know check at the time they check out it's easier for us to take a note on each and every transaction and that we do not miss out on anyone we also have an employee folio wherein there are accounts of various employees who charge purchase privileges and not always is handled by front office some accounts are directly handled by accounts department for example city folio credit card payment etc we do also have split folio or incidental folios wherein maybe a company spo sponsored his or her guest at times they request for a split folio one to record expenses to be paid by the company and the other to be directly paid so for example if a company has paid for my room and i have taken any service maybe uh, for example they have given that if uh, somebody is taking cigarette or drinks or any uh, for example i suppose if i go to a hotel and uh, my company is paying for my stay i am taking certain meals i am taking the salon service for my relaxation i am taking a uh, you know enjoying a drink by the pool so these are my personal expense and i wouldn't want the company to pay for the same so i can request that kindly prepare a bill i can request the front office person to prepare a bill for me wherein the charges for the rooms which is to be taken care by the company would be a separate one and the charges wherein i am taking i am paying for my own expenses will come in a separate one so that's a split folio meaning two different folios one recording direct payment and the other payments to be made by the company or any uh, you know groups for that part we'll now talk about examples of debit and credit entries now debit entries are room rates taxes food and beverage maybe laundry telephone uh, health club business center now credit payments can be prepayment part payment allowances adjustments transfer add a glimpse kindly check this and note it down with this we shall finish
we finished folios we now move on to ledger so what is a ledger it is a collection of the same type of accounts the front office ledger has a collection of folios there are normally two types okay one is guest ledger and one is city ledger very important now we'll understand what is a guest ledger a guest ledger contains all the details of all the financial transaction between all the resident guests and the hotel including charges and payments received from the guests in a manual system the financial recordings are recorded in a tabular ledger or a tab ledger and there are two types a horizontal one and a vertical one now the example of how a horizontal tabular ledger looks and a vertical tabular ledger looks will be given on your next chapter for now we'll just talk about the city ledger now a city ledger contains all the collective accounts of all the non resident guests and individuals and agencies to whom hotel extend charge privilege credit purchase facility okay it is known as a non guest ledger now these are the list of city ledger accounts city folio we also have bill to companies we have certain disputes late charges maybe guaranteed reservation travel agent vouchers airlines passenger service order credit cards skipper and walkouts now walkouts let me just explain these are uh, the ones who are who had done it unintentionally okay these are not like skipper walkouts with this students we finish city ledger we shall move on to our next topic accounting cycle as i was discussing about ledger let us understand with the diagrams how and what kind of ledgers are there number 1 diagram talks about vertical tabular ledger the second diagram talks about the horizontal tabular ledger we'll take up the vertical one first and discuss so you see everything is in a vertical order row wise okay so first we have the room number that's very important then we have the guest name the number of pax that's there how many people are there guest registration card number that is grc number the plan that they are uh, they have taken on the meal plan the rate tax breakfast lunch or dinner that they have opted for the total debit the total credit with this we have room numbers on top say suppose 101 room number 102 3 4 5 and so on and so forth we'll first note down the debits then we'll talk about the credits and then finally we'll be able to analyze what is what are the what is the total balance that we are on what is the a uh, total account if we are supposed to pay the guest or if we are supposed if the guest is supposed to pay us we can have a glimpse and you know make a note on the same we'll move on to diagram number 2 this is an example of a horizontal tabular ledger the room numbers are written this way you know from top to bottom so we have room number 301 302 3 4 5 and so on and so forth then we will have different floors we'll write names from top to bottom then we have facts rate breakfast lunch or dinner then we have credit and debit so everything is written from the top to the bottom and you know guest details are given from left to right This is an example of a horizontal tabular ledger. So students kindly know that uh, whenever guest checks in uh, 
from then on there are certain charges that has to be posted you know the room charges the taxes what all plan he has taken so we have to have an idea we'll have to have a place wherein we can you know uh, put in the charges and be carefree because there is just not one or two guests there are 200 there may be thousand there may be a lot of guests so it's it becomes very difficult if we def do it mentally right that's absolutely nearly not possible so just to keep things very easy just to keep things proper so that we do not miss any charges because you know for us also every penny is worth for the guest also he will definitely take care of whatever he spends he has to have a proper idea he has to have a proper you know a uh, written down document so just to make things very easy there's an accounting cycle we'll understand from the moment the guest checks in or maybe before his reservation is also let us now understand with the diagram so it's easier for all of you to understand this process so sorry we'll talk about creation of accounts so we'll start it with at reservation or checking so an account is created with the reservation being made or at the time of check in whichever is suitable the next process is maintenance of accounts that's very important you know if i think on my mind that okay he's made he's taken a uh, 50 rupees of cookies i'll put that uh, maybe at the end of my shift that doesn't happen right whenever a guest is making a you know using a service or a, you know purchasing anything or giving us any payment or taking any payment from us everything has to be noted then and there so that uh, we do not miss on anything the next is posting charges like i mentioned whenever he's taking any service or any product or we are giving him any service it's our duty the guest might forget but it is our duty that we post the charges then and there and we do not miss out on anything not even a 1 rupee okay then maintenance can also be done to recheck that's the duty manager's duty at the night audit at the time of night audit duty manager's major duty is to check the rates applied to each and every room the packages that we have posted is it posted correctly if the taxes that is picked up through the system if the taxes have been picked up correctly that is the duty of the duty manager or the lobby manager or the manager who is doing the night audit okay because if anything goes wrong the team associates will be questioned but the night auditor will be questioned at first because uh, it was his duty to check of each and every room of each and every guest if everything is specifically correct okay next we have settlement of accounts now that we have checked that each and every the taxes the rate plans the uh, charges nothing has been missed out and everything is correct we have to settle the accounts right we have to close this account because if anything remains open night audit cannot happen properly right so this accounts have to be settled how do we do that we do in immediate payment okay immediate payment is necessary and this deferred payment okay with this we finish accounting cycle with this we finish uh, what are the processes of creating and closing an account this is your last section the final section where we'll understand how a guest accounting cycle is closed this process is known as a zero out process okay so one last entry is made either on the debit side or the credit side depending on the outstanding account balance depending on whatever transaction that has been taken place the balance of the account is calculated with the following formula let us just check what the formula is so we'll definitely have an opening balance what we'll have to do with the opening balance we'll have to add debit entries now we'll have to minus credit entries what we'll get is the outstanding balance now if the debit side for example is more we definitely know that the guest has to pay and if the credit side is more the hotel will definitely do refunds to the guests 
what we'll ha have to check is that in an T account, both these sides, the debit and the credit side has to be zero, which is why the process zeroing out or zero out. We shall now move on to trial balance. In accounting, it is an aggregate of all the debit and credit entries and balances at the end of an accounting period. What it does, it shows us the in general the balance in total debit equals total credit before making any closing of entries. It serves as a worksheet for making closing entries and provides the basis for making drafts. The last topic is aging schedule or accounting aging accounts aging. Aging schedule is a table that shows summarized breakup of all accounts receivable into different time brackets. It is an important tool used in working capital management. That's very important for a hotel, right? For us to maintain and understand how the business is flowing, how what is the outcome of our project. To project patterns of collection and estimate doubtful debts. Now let us understand why is it called aging? That is because it ranks accounts receivable according to their age. That is into slabs such as not yet due, 30 days overdue, 60 days overdue. So one such problem that we will get is once it is very old, right? The collection of payments, you know, becomes very difficult. So students with this, we finish the last topic.